Hi everyone, my name is Alessia and today I'm going to be talking about the resources that you should have if you are an incoming first year U of T student. So I just finished my first year at U of T. I'm studying life sciences at the Faculty of Arts and Science. I'm majoring in human biology and I'm minoring in immunology and art history. So over my first year, I've accumulated a list of resources that I think are really important. This list is mainly for course selection. So if you want to see that list, continue watching and I'm going to go over it in some detail. So the first thing that you should have as an incoming U of T student is ACORN. So ACORN is going to be your best resource. You're going to have you're going to have your academic information there, your financial information, and other information under the life tab. So in academics, you can enroll in courses, you manage your courses, you can also enroll in programs. ACORN also gives you access to your timetables for the fall semester and the winter semester. You can see all your courses, whether they're in person, online synchronous, or online asynchronous. There's also information on your academic history and your transcripts if you need to access them. With ACORN, you can also find your financial information. So you'll find your outstanding balances, your financial arrangements, your payments and direct deposits if you have any. You can find your invoice and your net cost, so it breaks down everything that you're paying for. In ACORN under finances, you can also find your financial history. And the last thing in ACORN is under the tab life. You'll find stuff like health and wellness, involvement, housing, job and career planning, and lots of other resources. So the second resource is Quarkus. Quarkus and Acorn are probably the two most important resources that you need. Acorn is basically where you plan your degree, you pick your courses, you look at all your information, and then Quarkus is where your courses are. So you have Quarkus shells, so for life sciences, I had like biology and chemistry, so I had one shell for chemistry, one shell for biology, and under those shells are all the information that your professor gives you for the course itself. So you can read over the syllabus, you can see the dates and deadlines for the quizzes, term tests, exams, labs, whatever. Sometimes the professors also have separate Quarkus shelves for the lectures, the tutorials, and the labs, but other times they have them all packed together in one. So the third resource that you should have is the link to the academic dates and deadlines for the Faculty of Arts and Science. So I'll link all of these resources in the description so you can take a look for September. This basically gives you an overview of course enrollment start time, course enrollment priority periods, the first day of classes, the last day of classes, the dates that there are no classes, fall and winter reading week, and tuition fee payment dates. Now that we have all of that information, I'm gonna go over course selection, especially for our first year students at U of T. So the first thing you should do is go to the link I provided in the description for program lists. Here you'll see a listing of programs and subject areas for all of the options for specialties, majors and minors, if they're open, if they're restricted, all the prerequisites you need to get into them, and also the required courses they have in upper years. So for me, I'm gonna go under life sciences. Here is a list of the life science departments and programs. If I go under human biology, which is my major, I can see a blurb about what human biology is about. And then I can see a list of human biology programs that I can take. So I'm doing a human biology major, which is a science program. And here you can see the completion requirements I need to graduate with a major in human biology. So the first year required courses that I took for this program are Chem 135 and Chem 136, Math 135, Bio 120, and Bio 130. So once you've gone over the program list and you can see what programs you're interested in for a second year, you can look at the required courses and you can pick your first year courses from there. As a life science student, my prerequisite courses were already required for me. So the chemistries, the biologies, and the math. These courses were all prerequisites for the life science programs that I applied to in my second year. So I already knew that I had those courses and were able to apply to my majors and my minors. However, if you wanted to do a major in, let's say, psychology, you would have to make sure that one of your elective courses was Psych 100 because that is a required course for a major and a minor in a psychology program. So once you have an idea of the prerequisite courses that you need for your program and the upper year courses that you're going to have to take, you can go on to the course search link that I have linked in the description and you can do an advanced search. So this advanced search is mainly for elective courses. So you can find courses that 
fit into your timetable a little better. But for the required courses, there's not too much flexibility with the customization of the days of the week, the times, the instructor. Most of the prerequisite courses already have that lined out for you. So in the course listing website for the Faculty of Arts and Science, you can choose the courses that you want to take, whether they're prerequisites or electives, and you can view them on a timetable. I would suggest making a few timetables just because you probably won't get your first choices for the times and the electives that you want. Once you have these many rough drafts of your fall and winter timetables prepared, you can go onto Acorn and put all of these courses into your enrollment cart. So if you go to Acorn, under Academics, you will see Enroll and Manage, press Courses, and for this year, you press the 2022-2023 Fall and Winter Arts and Science Bachelor Degrees Program tab. Here, you can search in the session by the course code or the course title, and you can add these courses into your enrollment cart. Note that just because these courses are in your enrollment cart, you are not currently enrolled in them. You have to wait until your course enrollment time on your course enrollment date and then at that time, you log into Acorn and you enroll into your classes. This is why I say you should have multiple drafts of your timetables, because if you have a later enrollment time, you might not get your first choices. So overall, you should know that Acorn is your primary source of all of the information for your courses, your enrollment, and your finances. Quirkus is the resource in which your professors give you all of your information for your classes, tests, assignments, exams, labs, and tutorials will be on Quirkus with all of the information you need. Your syllabus will be posted on Quirkus, your slideshows for your lecture will be posted on Quirkus, your academic dates and deadlines outlines the dates and deadlines for any financial date, enrollment dates, start and end dates for your classes, and they also tell you the fall and winter reading week dates. And lastly, for course enrollment, you have your program list in which you can see the prerequisites for your courses and any upper year courses that you have to take if you want to specialize, major or minor in a program. You have your course search in which you can find the times and the professors for any course, and you can also look for elective courses for the year. And lastly, once you have those multiple timetables drafted through the course list link, you can go onto Acorn, put those courses in your enrollment cart, and on your enrollment date and enrollment time, you can enroll in those courses for the fall semester and the winter semester. So course enrollment time is a really stressful time for everybody, whether you're in first year or you're in fourth year, you really don't know if you're gonna get your courses, but I hope this video provided you with some good resources that you can use and provided some clarity for first year students going to U of T. I've also made a previous video on my first year experience at Woodworth College and being on a U of T college residence. So if you're looking for any information on the Woodworth Colleges or just on residence at U of T in general, you can check out that video. But that's the end of this video. Thank you so much for watching and let me know in the comments if you have any questions.